Hello, I hope you're doing great and so am I. Last week I was crossing an alley and I suddenly caught up an attention of one guy among four. They were discussing something and this guy was very very vociferous. He said, why the hell you want to attend such lectures? We have come, we have come out here waiting for you and you are attending the lectures, why for? And then suddenly he uttered that beep word which got my attention clearly and I started towards that direction. Perhaps whenever I cross that alley, I never give a damn to people standing anywhere. But suddenly this voice, this beep caught my attention. I went and I straight away faced that boy. I asked him, gentlemen, I know that I've gone through this age. I know what all goes in your mind and what all words you use. Can you use it? Maybe a little lower tone, maybe with lesser noise, maybe something that you can only confide to your circle and not beyond. I said, whatever you decide, whether you want to attend that lecture or not is absolutely your prerogative. It is you taking the control, nobody else. But mind my words, your offsprings, the next generation coming will definitely have a lot of problems because what you are saying about today's scenario may be about teachers or about the student itself and the kind of language that you are using, your offspring will be using still worse or maybe if that is a word than what you are doing because they will be having teachers like you, compromised, altered, very selfish minding their own business, not fearing what the society is, not at all minding where they are standing and just plainly following what the world is following. Very specific I'm talking about Indian scenario. But the serious question is, are we not losing on something which is basic of this society? Is learning is only restricted to the curriculum that we follow? Isn't there is something beyond? which helps us to build our knowledge from the books, which is called as value, ethics, principle, morals. Aren't we losing it badly? I was part of one such deliberation and there was this principal who was actually on the dais and speaking something very, very serious and it caught my attention. The doctor wants his child to become a doctor. An engineer wants his child to become an engineer. The businessman wants his child to be either a businessman or maybe a CEO of a company. The teacher also wants his kids to be someone like a CEO or an engineer or a doctor or something big in the society. Never a teacher. Nobody wants to become a teacher by choice. And that's a very sad truth of the society. When we were having the high tea program, we were just discussing about this. Now everybody was taking that serious note and don't want to step on that topic. But suddenly there were CEOs, MDs, HRs and many teachers along with me as a trainer. I being soft spoken, gentle and almost always smiling, one gentleman a CEO approached me. He asked me a serious question. The CEO decided to explain the problem with education. Now he being a CEO, he, he was very blunt, you know, straightforward, very analytical, thinking that he is, which he should be. I mean, he must be, right? No argument about it. But he said, what's a kid going to learn from someone who decided his best option in life was to become a teacher? That again caught my attention. And this time I, I felt it. My brain suddenly, you know, sparkled. I wanted to give a straight answer. But then he being a CEO, I thought, let me be a trainer. And then I waited for my turn. This CEO wanted to make a point. And very strongly, he pointed towards me and said, you Mr. Nair, just be honest. What do you make? I got the point. Everything was coming down to commercials. As I said, I being I, 
I smiled and looked at this gentleman and I replied. I said, well, I make kids work harder than they ever thought they could. I give them a feeling every time that they are winners. They are standing in the podium where there is a first runner up, winner and a second runner up. Almost like a medallion they are receiving whenever they do good. I make your kids sit for 40 minutes of class time when you yourself being a parent are unable to make them sit for 5 minutes. Of course with that iPod, cubes, game and that smartphone which has become smarter than you all. Still you want to know what I make? I make kids to wonder how is the sky blue? What is that which you have something as unique and the other person doesn't? I give them this point to wonder why girls are elevating themselves. Why boys are getting smarter and competitive. Why there is a healthy environment getting established. Why there are more students who are working for students now. I make them question that yes, this is not the ideal, idealistic time to live in and we have to do something. What is that which you have and you can do and contribute to the society? I also make them apologize whenever they commit something called as an error in human mind. And if they apologize, whether they mean it or not, because I teach them to be caring in the real sense. I make them have respect and take responsibility of their actions. The actions is everything whatever they're thinking in their mind and their actions are also taken as behaviors be it a personal life or a professional life. I teach them how to write and make them write. Keyboarding isn't everything which is seen nowadays. Smartphones with buttons on. I realize the importance of reading. I know that reading is unnatural. And I help them to read, read a lot because I really think that reading is something which is lacking in the society overall. That's the reason there is some kind of a setback in terms of more knowledge coming, more rational coming in our argument. I make them show all their work when they apply themselves mathematically of how arithmetic would be important in their logical life ahead. They use their God-given brain they do not use the man-made calculator. And when I was given this opportunity to teach foreigners first time, 14 Syrian students, I taught them everything they need to know about India while preserving their own unique cultural identity. What do I make? I make my classroom a place where all students feel safe. I make them understand that if they use the gifts they were given, the power of thinking, their strengths, their own reflection on what they are, what are the strengths they are possessing, what is the positive that they have, what is the self-belief they have, what is value system for them. I do a lot of swak every now and then. If success is to be spelled, I think you need to believe in yourself, believe your heart, believe your mind. Success is just a result. And then when people try to judge me by what I make, with me knowing money isn't everything, I can hold my head high and pay no attention because they are ignorant. You want to know what I make? I make human beings believe in themselves. Abdul Kalamji once tried to have sparrow. The sparrow stayed for some time and then vanished. He tried with squirrel. The squirrel stayed for some time and then vanished. Then came a time when Abdul Kalamji gave a serious thought. He said, let me work on the basics. He just sowed a seed. A plant emerged, which over a period of time gotten converted into a natural tree. And one day, there were sparrows, there were 
squirrels and there were more birds variety more animals than he ever thought i think society today needs something of this sort 20 years is a one life cycle of a human being where values change because the generation change if all are talking about that basic generation ahead we have a task at hand and it is not teachers alone or trainers alone it is all of us who are natural teachers and trainers so if next time you are celebrating teachers day remember there are more days to be celebrated and everybody over here is a teacher